we are going to demonstrate experiment one of the electronic playground 130 and learning center kit, the electronic woodpecker. We will use this wiring sequence and here are the instructions on how to properly wire the grid so that you will have the circuit. Now when I insert the last battery and please turn down your volume because this may get loud. You will hear a sound that resembles that of a natural woodpecker. And you can adjust the volume using the control knob. You can make it louder or quieter. Now, the default wiring sequence does not include either of the switches, but you can modify the connections to do so, and I am going to do that now, so that when we hit the key right here, the circuit will sound, and it will sound as long as it is held down. Then, if you want to hook up the slide switch, you use this wiring sequence, and here they show you what you need to do in order to use either the key or the switch. But now, when I turn on the switch, the woodpecker sound will start. And you can still adjust the volume, whether you're using the key or the switch. Now what's neat is that you can take actually take this circuit outside and try to attract birds with it by turning it on. Especially if you're into birds, this circuit might work. You don't want to leave it on too long because you may drain the batteries quickly, but you can at least try for a short while in calling birds over. Now what's interesting is that we can actually change the sound of the circuit by moving these two wires over. You can move them down to these connections and then turn on the switch. Let's see what the circuit sounds like now. Now it sounds more like a bird chirping or even perhaps even a cricket. You can try many different combinations of resistance and capacitance in place of the default resistor and capacitor. Experiment two is the chirping bird. We will have the slide switch turned on and then we will push and hold down the key. And then when we let go of it, the circuit will make a chirping sound like that of a bird. Now, we can also try different capacitors to see how that affects the sound and duration of it. For instance, there's uh, this wiring sequence. and this one as well. Some capacitors store more energy than others, so that means the sound will last longer and also it, uh, the capacitor also helps determine the quality of the sound. Here is the electronic cat. Using this wiring diagram, we will set the switch on the control center to the B position where it is now. And then we will quickly push and release the key. The circuit makes meowing sounds. Now as the sound is dying, fading out, you can adjust the control knob, which I can't really do, but you can see the different combinations of sounds that are made. Also, for the second part of this project, move the switch to the A position and then hit the press switch again. 
you'll see that also adjusting the control knob has an effect on how long the sound lasts. Back to the beat position. Do you notice any of it, any difference? You could use this circuit as a way to deter mice from your home if you don't have a cat, an actual cat or mouse trap. Hopefully, the sound may scare those pests away. Although I don't really recommend using it because you have to be with the circuit. You always have to hold down the key in order to push the key repeatedly to make the sound work. But it is a nice entertainment project nonetheless. The Sonic Fish Caller is a very interesting project. We will insert this battery into the holder because there is no switch on the circuit. Now turn down your volume, but when I turn on the circuit by pointing in the battery, you hear a very high-pitched sound. This is an example of an audio oscillator. And what's interesting is that many marine animals use sound to communicate with one another. And you may have learned that whales and porpoises communicate by sound, although they're not the only ones. Some fish are also attracted to certain sounds, like the one being produced by this circuit. You can adjust it by using the control knob. And what's interesting is that you can actually put this circuit near a home aquarium if you have one and see how the fish react. They may actually swim towards the direction where the circuit is. And then you can actually try it out while fishing. You can connect another speaker and attach it to terminals one and two here, but make sure it's in a waterproof vessel so that it doesn't get damaged when you put it in the water, but then you might actually attract fish and have more success if you produce these sounds. You can try a different capacitor if you are not successful at first. There are different combinations that you can try. But good luck fishing if you decide to do that.